All right, guys, so in this kind of fast paced tutorial, I'm not going to go through exactly how to recreate everything because it is just it's a little bit uh, complicated and I don't really want to get back into it because I just finished it now. I hope there's no flaws in, in it, but if there are and you try this, please let me know as soon as possible so I can try and work around it and fix it. But basically, if you guys remember old games like Legend of Zelda, uh, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, all of those sort of things, every Zelda, I guess, basically, you basically get items where you equip them to yourself and then you use them with like the C buttons or with A or B or something like that. So I kind of uh, made that in my game. So what I did was I collected some items and I hit um, a little trigger that displays the HUD. And when the HUD's displayed, you could see A and B. And if I want to use A, it says you have nothing equipped in slot A. And I'm like, okay, if I want to use B, you have nothing equipped in slot B, all right? And if I want to uh, remove the hood, I just click that to remove it. And I can still use the um, whatever's there if it's there. It just gets rid of the picture for like cinematic views or whatever, what have you, cutscenes and whatnot. And to redisplay, I just hit that. So right now I picked up items from the chest. The two items I picked up were, whoops, not those ones, a harp and an ax. So I haven't done anything with these items. They don't do anything, I'm just kind of getting there i wanted to make sure i can actually do this so if i want to select the harp i'll use the harp and it says equip to which slot and i'll equip it to b so you equip your heart to slot b all right it's in slot b i hit b you use your harp so if you were going to it, i basically made it so it assigned to a common event and that is working because the common event says you use your harp so i'm like okay awesome now let's say i wanted to equip my axe and let's say I wanted to equip it to B just because, you know, I'm forgetting something's already there and, you know, I need to debug this and kind of break it. Let's equip it to B. You already have something equipped there. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're doing. Use your harp. So it's still the harp that's there. A, still nothing in A. So we're going to go back. Item, key items, uh, axe again. We'll go and try this again. We'll, we'll equip it to slot A this time. You equip your axe to slot A. Awesome. It's there. We hit A and use your axe. That is, this is awesome. Use B. Use your harp. Still working. Go to items. Uh, key item. Harp. Let's use the harp. And we get some options here. Uh, you already have your harp, harp equipped. Would you like to unequip it? And I'll go no. I'm going to go no real quick. Hit B. Still able to use the harp. Hit A. Still able to use the axe. Awesome. Item. Key item. Harp. Use. You already have it equipped. Would you like to unequip it? Yes. All right. Now, if we hit B, you have nothing equipped in slot B. If we hit A, we have our axe still equipped. So, so far, I'm pretty sure this works all fine and dandy. And if we try to use the harp to get to A, it says there's already something there. And one last, uh, one last go around to see if we can unequip everything in... Let's see, unequip it, yes. All right, awesome, we hit A, we have nothing equipped there, we hit B, we have nothing equipped there. We could get rid of it or reappear. Awesome, so everything works, I, I guess. I, I haven't tried three items yet, but I'll get there eventually. Uh, I should be able to get to three items pretty quickly because once you get more than one, you kind of have all of the conditions already laid out. Now, I'm gonna try and go on what I did for this. The first thing I did was make I got the screen size of my video game, and currently it is 1104 by, I have it right here, 1104 by 624, and I'm using a, every single Yen Flies plugin, so that, that that's a thing. And uh, one of the things you're going to want are from Yen Fly, if you go to his website, yenfly.moe, M-O-E, I'll put a link in the description. You need this plugin right here, the uh, Button Common Event, and uh, the reason why you need this is because I've set up key a on the keyboard to use common event 12 and you could just double click here by changing which common event you want it to do and then b to use 13 and then uh, i believe that's all the plugins you need any everything else i've been able to do on my own and uh the next thing you're going to want to do is create five images or more depending on the amount of items you're going to have your character be able to use the first thing is going to be the kind of image overlay so the background that's going to be where this a and b button are now uh, you have to divide this whole image up into grids and kind of go through an image. Um, oh, look, I have a little mess right there. Oh, well, but you basically create an image like this, make everything transparent except like two of those brick things right there. So what I what I basically did was um, 
I uh, gridded out the image ahead of time and placed those um, two images right here and right here. And then every item image basically goes here or there. So A and B. So that is why I had to make a... If we go back here, we have axe A, but then we have an axe and B. So you have to make two for every item there. It's kind of annoying, but you don't have to do this. But I wanted to make my images just display image. Don't display image. I don't want to display an image. And then based on if there's already, you know, an item in A and I have to put it in B, I don't want to have to slide that image over or anything. So I just made two images per item and then a background image and then it's fine. And to kind of show you guys where the image lines up, if I just play it real quickly, move here. So we see that it loads there. And my character goes really slowly. It lags sometimes because I'm recording. Not sure why, but it's just what it does. But yeah, you can kind of see I took the image here, the 1104 by 6, whatever, and kind of put those in a neat kind of, I think that's a pretty neat area. I might move it, you know, it doesn't matter. But anyway, let me just get rid of those. So now we dive into some interesting code. Well, it's, you know, you're, you're scripting with common events, but it's technically code. So if we go to items real quick, I want to show you guys the harp and the axe. Basically, uh, only used through the menu, key items, you could change that if you want. It's not consumable, you don't want it to go away. And make sure you um, add an effect that tells it what common event to do. Same with the axe. And you're going to need a different one for each one, unless you decide to code more. I didn't want to do that, so I just made it simply, just do another common event. Now, common events. Alright, so I've tried to do this at least three times, and I think I finally have a good way of doing this and it makes sense to me so yeah here we go what we're gonna first do is display hood what this does is it's going to display the picture with the uh, background so that kind of picture right there with um you know it just has that so always display the background there's no um condition we need to not display it or display it next what we're gonna do is in this half is this half well other than turning it off we're basically going to ask um, what position the harp is in. Now the harp, you have to have um, variables for the um, for each item you make. So harp position, axe position, hammer position, whatever, or boots or something. Whatever you decide to make, you're going to have to put that in there. With switches, uh, you're basically going to have to have a switch for each common event. And, uh, well, I guess not exactly each, but... For a lot of them, hide hood, display hood, hood A taken, so hood the slot A is if that's taken, hood B taken, check hood positions, and remove hood. I think that's all of the ones I've used. Oh, and there's an extra... Is there other switches? No, I don't think so. There's another variable I forgot to mention, and that's a temp variable. Basically, you need a random... Not random, but you can actually use random, but I kind of want to separate this to temp and random. Matter of fact, I'm going to capitalize that because uh, it looks better. So you're going to check for harp position zero. If the harp position is zero, which means zero is in your inventory and not equipped, you're going to erase picture one and uh, two and three. Now, picture one, you're always going to set to the overlay, the, um, the regular hood with nothing in there. Pictures two and three are going to correspond to A and B of your first item. Uh, if you want to add another item, you're going to have to use picture four and five. And you're never going to have to use these pictures for anything else. Any other picture you use, it's going to have to start at some other number and not these. They cannot overlap because it will just ruin everything. So, harp position zero means it's in your inventory. You're going to erase um, any pictures you have up of it being in... Um, slot A or B kind of makes sense. It's not equipped. It's in your inventory. So don't show the pictures of it being equipped Now we're gonna start an else branch and to do else whoops You basically make the conditional loop and then check this to create an else branch uh, With this else we're gonna check harp position one What this means is the harp is now in the first position which is in slot A so picture two is slot A for harp so we're gonna set it to the picture with the heart being in what would look like slot A. So if we overlap this image with the other image, so if we basically do this to that, but imagine that that's the harp. 
it's going to look like, you know, the picture you, you have harp A, you have harp equipped into slot A. And we're going to erase picture three. Uh, just make sure, you know, just put in some extra checks in here. So just make sure you don't have two of them on the screen. You're going to actually want to erase it anyway, I believe. If you don't erase it and you put position and you take it from position A or B, which is picture three, it's not going to erase it. I'm not sure, but I'm just putting it there and it works. Uh, you're going to create an else for this as well. And um, in the else, you're basically going to do the opposite where it would be harp position two, but you don't have to make another condition because you already have, there's only three positions an item can be in. And it's zero, one, two. So inventory A or B. And after you've already checked zero or inventory, and after you've already checked position one, slot A, you don't have to check for position uh, two or B because it's going to be in there. There's no other position it could be in. Now, what we're going to do is basically uh, copy this, paste it, and change everything for an axe. So position zero of the axe, erase pictures four and five. Now, four is basically picture two, but for the axe. So what you're going to do is if you're going to have another item, just increase this by two and increase this by two. And um, uh, basically, uh, evens would be the slot A's, odds would be the slot B's. So axe position one, if it's in slot A, you're going to show picture four of it looking like it's in slot A, and you're going to erase picture five of it being in slot B. Uh, opposite, basically, for this. And uh, typically when I make common events that need to run over everything else, so parallel, and they need to only run once, I usually have just a control switch here to off. So in, when you click this, it's going to turn display on, and I only need display to be turned on uh, once. So that's why I have uh, a display hood and off. I always put in off if it's a, an event that needs to be ran only once but I need to call it whenever I need it so uh, it switches um, its triggers parallel and its switch is display hood which was the switch if you um, touched you know whatever that red gem is right there and basically at the very end it's going it's going to turn itself off we have a check hood positions and off so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first check if all of your items if all of the items are in your inventory. What that would mean is if all of the items positions are zero. So if they're all zero, we're gonna create a control variable called temp. We're gonna add in the harp position and the axe position and any other items positions that we happen to have. We'll just copy, paste, paste, paste to our heart's content and just add them all up. Next, what we're going to do is if temp is zero, which means all their positions were zero, we're going to make sure that control switch 10 and 11 or hood a taken hood b taken are off so there's nothing up there in the slots basically um they're completely empty this means that items can be put into them so that's the first check in here out of three so if um all the items if there's nothing up there the second check all right so i had to actually code a little bit to get this working because if we look at um I just put in random work where I want to save some work. What I had to do first was check if harp position is zero. And if harp position was zero, it wasn't up there. So take both those off. That is not, it might technically not be right, but I'm going to get to the point why I had to code a little bit. If we check, the logical thing is to check for harp position one, because if harp position is one, we're going to say that the first slot is taken. You can't put anything up there. And then we're going to, turn the other slot off to where something can be put up there. Likewise for the opposite, if it's in position two or slot B, we're going to take one, we're going to take slot A sit and say that's free and then slot B is taken. Now, I have to do that for every item, but this whole everything in here is currently wrong. We have to check for basically, we have to basically check if harp position is one or if axe position is one, or if any number of items you have position is one. And if any of those are one, we're going to have to set slot A as taken. Now, if you decide to try and make this uh, conditional loops uh, control branches, you're gonna have to have 
a lot of control branches because you have to check for if harp is not in position one is axe in position one and there's a whole bunch of anding you have to do and what's bad about anding is you don't need to know if all of those are in position one because only one can be in position one you need or statements mv does not support conditional branched or statements so that is what these two are right there that that's that's or so you have to check if uh game variables value 23 that is basically my harp position if that is equal to one or if the axe position is equal to one or if any number of items you have is equal to one you would basically just copy that enter there uh, do some indentation because it looks nice and then just change this to the next item you have so if any number of items are in the slot a position what you're going to have to do is execute some code which is in this curly braces where you're going to turn the switch for 10 on switch 10 is um hood a taken so is is there something in the first slot basically now if you were to do this with conditional branches that can only support anding you would have to have two to the power of how many items you have so it would be four um nested conditional branches for two items it would be eight for three it would be 16 for four and it would just if you have 32 items, you're going to have 2.147 billion conditional branch nesting. And I, I don't want that. So I had to figure out how to code. And um, I didn't have to figure out how to code. I just had to figure out how to call and set some values because it's not explicitly clear. At first, I thought it may have been like, oh, game variable. Okay. 23. Whoops. Oh, my God. Is that 23? No, you actually have to do dot value 24. I don't know. It's a whole thing. But basically, you would just add these two. Uh, what this does is basically check for if any items in the slot A position or if any item is in the slot 2 position. And if it's if any item is going to be in any of those slots, you're just going to make sure that slot is flagged as taken or true or on whatever they decide to call it. Next, what I do is turn this off because this is a common event and off to where it only needs to run once and it needs to run parallel so I hope you guys kind of understand that it, it took a little while to figure that out but that is the main longest part of this if you don't do it in an actual script or code I don't know why it says script because this is technically you know the language right here this is JavaScript I don't I don't understand why it says script but and that has nothing to do with the language being called JavaScript because it could have been Ruby and it would still say scripts, I think. Anyway, moving on. Remove hood. So if we want to remove the hood. Okay, so it turns out you don't even need remove hood. If I kept that in, I could have just gotten rid of all of these erase pictures. Um, because in remove, uh, remove hood and off, it basically erased everything. And then only and then called display hood which only put which if I um, got rid of all these erased pictures the, uh, the display hood would only show pictures of what items are there or what items aren't there so it's kind of redundant to have let's erase them all and then let's check what's there while erasing ones that aren't there so just I got r rid of uh, remove hood and off and put in just I basically put them t two together so I basically just added display hood here instead of remove hood on, which would erase everything and then do some more erasing while displaying the item. So that's what happens if uh, in the else basically and outside of the statement. Now we have uh, equip to which slot. So if harp is in the inventory position zero, it's going to ask you equip to which slot. Now you're showing choices here and uh, I believe that's most of it. Yeah, that's all of it basically. And uh, on choice, the choices are A, B, unequipped, and cancel. Uh, cancel, I can imagine you guys can figure that out. Uh, for A, we're going to um, check and make sure if hood A is taken, if it's on, if it's true, if there's an item in slot A already. Um, if that is true, it's going to tell us you already have something equipped there. If we don't have something there, it's going to take the harp position move um set it equal to one which equips it to slot a 
That's basically it. Now, when you hit B, it's basically going to be the same thing as A except for B to where um, you're going to check and make sure there's nothing in B with a uh, hood B taken is on. If, the, if it's on, there's already something equipped there. Uh, else, we're going to change the position of the harp to 2, which puts it in slot B. Now, when unequipped, we're going to check and make sure that the harp is in your inventory. Because if it's in your inventory, it says we're going to tell the user uh, you don't have your harp equipped. It's not, it's not in there. You're, you're clicking the harp in your inventory, and you're unequipping it but it's already in your inventory. It's already unequipped. Now, what we're going to do is else if harp is in position 1. Uh, if it is in 1 and you're unequipping it, you're going to take the position to 0. Wait. Alright, so if harp is in position 1, so it's in slot A, uh, we're basically going to first tell the hood that A is taken. So A becomes off. So it's not in there anymore. Likewise, else, so the only other position there is is 0, or 2, my mistake. If harp position is 2, we're going to take the slot B trigger and turn that off so that there's nothing in there. Now, while we do that, we're going to also um, have the harp position turned to zero. So it's actually gone. It's not in there at all. And we're going to tell the user, you want to equip your harp. And then in cancel, you're just going to do nothing. And it ends. And it doesn't go through this else. And then it just ends. It still runs some checks, though. So just some redundancy checks here. Now, everything is basically the same in e uh, uh, equipped axe. But... Instead, it's it's the variables for axe. So I can imagine you guys can figure that out. Now, the last thing we have to do is when A is pressed. So back in the beginning of this video, I told you guys with the NFLIX plugins, I made it so that um, if you press the A key, it's going to trigger the 12th common event. If you press the B key, it's going to trigger the 13th common event. And now you could change those keys to anything, but A and B, kind of, you know, it's simple. I haven't made it touchscreen capable yet, so that will be a thing I'll have to do. Or technically, maybe I even don't, but I won't get into that now. So, when A is pressed, what you're going to do is... Alright, so there was a problem with uh, A pressed originally, and you may see that all of this code is familiar and is basically exactly the check hood positions and off. The reason being is because, sure, I could just tell this to point back to uh, check hood positions and off, but if I do that, it's then going to run this maybe a little bit quicker than this, and I don't want that. I needed to actually check some things uh, before I, A is pressed. So what you do is you just take all the code in here, that would be where you would point it to and then just run it right in here. So that's kind of what this it's a repeat of, um, you know, checking hood positions to make sure what's what and where's where and all of that sort of stuff. So now what we're going to have to do is run a check. So if hood A is taken, so if uh, there's an item in slot A, we're going to check some things. Is harp in position one? So is the harp there? Uh, if it is, use the harp. Is the axe there? And if it's not the harp, it's going to just continue on to this. Is the axe there? If it is, use the axe. And then you would just put in some more right here of different items and such if you wanted, if you had more items. But we're also going to have an else if, uh, if there's nothing in there. And that's going to be telling the user you have nothing equipped in slot A. So that that's basically all of uh, this whole entire uh, structure. The most difficult thing being check hood positions where... You want to check ORs and not ANDs. But yeah, guys, that is basically um, how you can uh, create a kind of Zelda-esque feel in your video game. You can go around, and um, I kind of wanted it so that um, if you were to get an axe item, like, for example, items, key items, axe, and we put this into slot A. Now, whenever I go up to a bush or something, I just hit A in front of that bush, and you have to set up some things 
um, to set that up, you would just honestly run a parallel common event that has a list of positions your user can be in, kind of. And if it's in this position that's next to a plant, destroy that plant. Or you could do a whole bunch of other things. There's thousands of ways you could probably do it. I'll probably find not that way because I just thought of some other ways that are already quicker than that. But um, basically, you'd use the axe to get through some, some sort of uh, barriers sort of thing. You know, just like in The Legend of Zelda and stuff like that. And then the harp can be used as like a teleport kind of item. We're going to go ahead and equip it to be awesome. And then you press it and uh, you teleport away or something like that. But yeah, that's uh, that's it for this uh, video. Hope you guys uh, could understand uh, all of that. Um, if not, let me know what sounded confusing for you guys, and I will try to explain it in words, in typing words. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.